Mike Fairlack here to entertain you on this rainy afternoon uh, with the help of Sir Elton John. The left it all to make you think he's corrupt with sin, but despite the slander, he started campaigning again. The current contradictory administration is setting the stage for permanent clown world now. Don't you know, Trump's still standing, even after what the extremists did. On J13, J13, he became a true survivor, being blamed for the world's sins. Trump's still standing, even after what the extremists did. On J13, he became a true survivor, being blamed for the world's sins. Trump's still standing. Yo, yo, yo. Trump's still standing. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be my mantra, what I talked about in the other video short and a couple other videos. Uh, Mike, you must do better. You must try harder. You must. Like the last episode of The Greatest American Hero. Man, I, I feel better than I felt in... <sighs> Eight to ten years, honest to God. I have hope again. Even if my dreams never come true, I have hope again. And that's the main thing. That's the important part. Yeah. Perspective shooter whose preferred pronouns are was and were. <laughs> that's not mine. <laughs> that uh, red-headed comedian, uh, JP. <laughs> he that one up. Yeah. Uh... There's a non. He speaks contradictory to the to the um, to his audience uh, about uh, things going on in the world. Um, it probably helps him get around the censors. Uh, yeah, a non uh, assassination attempt with a uh, suspected shooters who it turns out uh, pronouns uh, uh, preferred pronouns are was and were. <laughs> Thank God for that. Blew that guy's head off. Yeah, but that is going to be my mantra, though. Uh, I must do better. I must try harder. I must. Whenever I need uh, inspiration and encouragement to do just that, I'll just watch the footage. Fight! 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 So, with this video, I just wanted to uh, relate some uh, Hollywood stories um, to and how they're pertaining uh, to the political climate of things going on in the world today. Also going to reiterate uh, and probably end this video with some, basically some stuff I said on some video, recent video shorts. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, cha the, uh, the entertainment business is changing and not for the good. Not for the good. I uh, recently was talking about Oliver Stone on, on a, a video I made uh, recently. And how I think uh, uh, Candace Owings' problem is she's just discovering a lot of the conspiracy theories that made me watch all of her Stone movies as a teenager. I think she's just discovering some of those conspiracy <laughs> theories now. Um, anyways, uh, <clears throat> but I wanted to uh, talk about uh, a particular movie that we uh, uh, saw when we were kids uh, from Oliver Stone. The Natural Born Killers, and our initial reaction at the time, as well as other Oliver Stone movies, uh, JFK mainly, but I just remember uh, a feeling of, a mutual feeling of disappointment that Rodney Dangerfield was in this movie. It's like, we were all like, why would he be a party to this? I think um, <clears throat> when, uh, I think, uh, I'm going to put it this way. If, if, if I'm sure if I took the time now to rewatch JFK, there'd be some stuff in there that I'd be like, okay, Ali, buddy, what are we going for here? <laughs> I remember because I had a VHS copy of it. I even had the poster. I even had the, the that famous poster for that movie, the all white and a um, little bit of red and blue. Anyways, I had that poster hanging up in my room when I was... 14, 15 years old. But I remember, uh, so I had the only VHS copy of it. I remember my mom wanted to borrow it because she, her and her, her boyfriend, Amanda, they wanted to watch it. Um, and I just remember, 
<laughs> my ma in the aftermath tells us, so, so what did he, I asked her, so what did he think of JFK? <laughs> He's like, and I'm going to have to uh, blank a word here because I can't say a word on here. I can't believe a bunch of, <laughs> I'm out it, a bunch of killed JFK. <laughs> That was his initial reaction to, uh, I can't believe a bunch of kids killed JFK. <laughs> oh. But anyways, moving on. Uh, so, Oliver Stone, I think I understand now, now that I know that John Lennon quote, I think Oliver Stone, when he makes these movies, was kind of applying what John Lennon said about, it's not, I might be uh, changed it up a little bit because I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's a John Lennon quote that goes something to the extent of, it's not the artist's job to dictate the emotion or viewpoint, only to express it from their own viewpoint, being 100% true to their own viewpoint. That's the job of the artist. Or, or think, or oh, as he, as no, no, and then I'm thinking about it the way John Lennon said it, says it in that movie. Imagine because it's not the artist's uh, job to dictate the emotion. The emotion already exists. All right, moving on to another movie we saw. We all went to the theater to see when I was growing up. G.I. Jane. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> that scene, and again, I'm gonna have to mouth one of the words. Where uh, uh, Demi Moore's strong and independent character says to the sergeant, Suck my... <laughs> I gotta be honest. In the theater, seeing this as a teenager, I felt like Luke Wil Wilson's character in the movie Idiocracy... <laughs> While everybody in the theater is hooting and howling over the number one movie in the country, ass, and that's all it was for 90 minutes. <laughs> it won Best of the Award that year. <laughs> oh, I, that's how I felt. I felt like Luke Wil Wilson's character in that scene in that movie, in in real life, in my real life, in the theater, when Demi Moore's character said, suck my, to the sergeant. I was like, what? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, I remember my mom commenting that she liked the way it was acted. She, she felt it was realistic in uh, the way uh, the sergeant was not giving any leeway to Demi Moore's character, showing, showing her how it's really going to be if she, she wants to be in the military. Uh, and I, I remember my ma uh, speaking highly to that point in the movie. Um, but it's not like that in real life. That's why our military is so weak now. Women do not belong in underground combat. Yeah, but while there might have been people in the audience that are thinking, Yeah, you go, girl boss. She told that man, suck my... <laughs> yeah, what a girl boss she is. <laughs> um, honestly, I thought... I didn't see this one until many years later, but I thought Demi Moore's character in the, uh, the movie Striptease was more strong and independent, at least more realistic, <laughs> at the very least. I remember one scene that she's talking about, uh, I'm going to have to get a job to take care of me and my child, a job that's going to pay less, way less money. <laughs> you know, at, least, at least her character was being a realist. <laughs> Ooh, yes, sir. Learning about uh, political climate by, by referencing enter, the entertainment business past. <laughs> I remember after 9-11... Um, on SNL, uh, there there was a whole bit where uh, the mayor of New York at the time, Mayor Giuliani, came out and uh, um, uh, you know talked about what happened and everything. And uh, um, I, I don't remember all what he said, but uh, I remember what Lauren Michael said. His reaction, very comment to what uh, Giuliani said. Can we be funny? <laughs> and of course, the audience laughed and and. Uh, um, uh, the audience laughed, and um, 
And then uh, Giuliani, uh, I, I do remember what Julie said, Giuliani said after that, why not start now? <laughs> and then the whole of the New York Fire Department said, live from New York, it's Senate Live. I think that's a pretty interesting compare contrast to what happened in 2016 after Trump became president. What did they do? They had freaking uh, Amy Poehler on there doing her uh, Hillary Clinton uh, impersonation, playing piano and singing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Like, even at the time, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I think that might have marked the beginning of the end of my truly, truly watching that show. <laughs> Because after that, I just remember one thing after another uh, of uh, uh, Trump and uh, Russia and, oh, God, and Trump made a deal and with uh, with death and, oh, boy. And, and there were, I remember skits with uh, frickin' that uh, that uh, murderer, what's his name, uh, uh, Baldwin, on there uh, uh, um, as Trump and some guy dressed up in a, a, death's, uh, a death costume, like, like he's death. You know. <laughs> it's like... What well, this, this something was not comp computing, with uh, what I was being told on the shows and even on the news, and what I was seeing in the real in the real life in real life. But yeah, I think it's uh, true though. Yeah, um, if Trump doesn't uh, get in there by a landslide, uh, really, I mean, it's going to be like. Uh, 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 there'll be, there'll it'll be like a never-ending story, you know. There'll be no more America anymore. Um, after, especially after the debate, what the world saw with uh, the lies being told about uh, to us about Joey's health by NBC, MSNBC, CNN, the New York Times, the Washington Post, um, um, the BBC News. All these are say, oh, 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 Joe's just fine. Yeah, he's vibrant as ever. <laughs> and then you see what happened on that debate stage. <laughs> and this is why they're panicking. <laughs> George Clooney. When, that's why Joe is backing out. I knew a couple days before. Everyone's like, uh, a guy I work with at the part-time at the store. It's like, did you know Joe, Joe is backing out? I told him, yeah, I knew four days ago when George Clooney took his money away from him. <laughs> Jeez. God, help us all. And although, yeah, Joe won the 2020 uh, election, he did not win Wisconsin. That was proven in a court of law. Despite the fact in 2020, the news, all the news I would have us believe that he did, in fact, win Wisconsin. He did not win Wisconsin. Joe Biden did not win Wisconsin. He may have won the presidency, but he did not win Wisconsin. And uh, you know, we still don't know. We still don't have any answers to what happened at 1 a.m. Those boxes under the table, the windows being covered so the people who were supposed to see the counting weren't allowed to see the counting. There's still nothing. They say nothing about this on the news. Yeah, if Trump don't win, there'll be no more America anymore. Like the childlike emperor says in Never Ending Story, that the little boy, if you don't make a wish, there'll be no Fantasia anymore. I believe on a video showed, I recently shared a <coughs> thing about that, that, that uh, the time that uh, Trump guest spotted on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air show, and I guess the little girl, the daughter, whatever, in the story, uh, comes out and, and she goes, Is this Donald Trump? She looks at him and says, you ruined my life! <laughs> and walked away, and I guess his wife or whatever at the time was like, what was that all about? And Trump's like, people are always blaming me for things. <laughs> yeah, the ones who have money get blamed by those who don't. I, I can actually share a, a personal story without using names. I had a co-worker. Uh, everybody at work, oh yeah, he's got all this money, and... You know, the man showed me, he voluntarily showed me his bank statement. Yeah, it was a substantial amount of money for somebody who, you know, lives within their means and isn't buying cars and houses every time they turn around. But, jeez, 
I, and I remember sharing that with a, 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 a with a coworker or a family member, and they're they're saying, "Oh, he's got more than that." What? First of all, why is it your flunking business? I'm gonna do a video, uh, um, uh, probably tomorrow, about what, I know what I'm gonna do with my money now. Since I don't have a family to support, I don't. Have, I, uh, I have the very real prospect of having a lot of money in my account at the time that I leave this depart from this world. But uh, I'm going to do a separate video about that, talking about what I'm going to do with it. Right now, I'll just say it's going to involve uh, an expedition. That's all I'm going to say here. All right, for the last little bit of this, I'm just going to uh, uh, reiterate a couple of video shorts without, having, without the pressure of having to get them done in under a minute. And start off with talking about that angel flag. The flag got tangled up, and they say it was shaped like an angel. We can't have that. That gives people hope for something bigger than themselves. You want to have hope? You put your hope where it belongs. In government. That's where your hope belongs. I, I posted a video short called How Hive Mind Works, where I said, Let's create a system where we control the thought process of the populist. We will be holy and righteous in our efforts because our ideology is holy and righteous in its very nature, we've decided. Now understand, in the beginning it will be very important the populace believe our ideology to be inclusive. But we in our all-knowingness know the time will come when we will need to exclude anyone who is Intellect, whose intellectual viewpoint is non-conforming to us. Yeah. Make no mistake, folks. Uh, leftist ideology, any extremist ideology, is religion disguised as Gnosticism. As, as disguised as atheism. I know, I used to be an atheist. I, I, I believed in something. I called it the human spirit, but I had no real knowledge of God. My, my opinion of God as a teenager, young adult, was, well, God left us here to fend for ourselves, so that's just what we're going to do. <laughs> we don't need him. You know? it's like, and, uh, yeah, um, that's definitely not the right uh, attitude, the right the outlook for it. But then I made another video short talking about why human beings in time always are doomed to fail. And this has been proven throughout human history. Is why we, the, why the founding fathers who wrote the Constitution stated to, in order to form a more perfect union, they were acknowledging anything made by humans, even government, is not perfect. America is not perfect. Only God Almighty is perfect. And I hope and pray the time will come when I might know a small piece of that beautiful perfection. I do see it from time to time all around me. Recent historical events come to mind. You must be paying attention. In Jesus' name, amen.